And there's this one hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that's profound where it has a few different variations and I've mentioned a shorter variation of this hadith before. But a longer one which is also authentic and profound. That Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As ta'ala says, I said to the Prophet ﷺ, من خير الناس? Who is the best of people? And it's very telling that this is such a frequent sentence uttered by the mouths of the best generation to ever live. They were seeking to be the best people as individuals and so they collectively became the best generation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. So many times you find a companion coming to the Prophet ﷺ on the side and saying, who is the best of the best? Because I want to be that person. I'm not satisfied with simply being a companion. I want to be khayrun nas. I want to be the best of the best, even if the rank of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Khadija and Aisha seems so unattainable, I want to be the best. So the Prophet ﷺ would always respond with what a quality. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ could have simply named an individual and all that would have done was demoralize this person and leave them in that place of search and in that place of complacency because I'll never be this person. He always responded with quality sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, ذُلْ قَلْبِ الْمَخْمُومِ وَاللِّسَانِ الصَّادِقِ A person who has a pure heart and a person who has a truthful tongue. Now by the way, who is the best companion? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The truthful one. He spoke only the truth and as an Imam al-Muzani rahimahullah said about him, he said, ما سبق الصحابة بكثرة صلاة ولا صيام. He didn't beat the companions out because he prayed more than them and he fasted more than them, but more than them. But because he had something in his heart, سبقهم بشيء وقر في قلبه. Something happened to his heart. رضي الله تعالى عنه. So the Prophet ﷺ gave the qualities. He said, the best people of this ummah are people who speak truth and people who have purified hearts. And he said that we said to the Prophet ﷺ, We know what a truthful tongue is, Ya Rasulullah. But what is, What is a pure heart? Can you be more specific as to what a heart being pure is? He said, He said, that it is a heart that is first and foremost God-fearing, conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqi, it's God-fearing. Secondly, it is naqi, it's pure. Now, by the way, these first two traits here shape the rest of the hadith. Meaning what? There's a category here of taqwa, a category here of being God-conscious, which means that it will never violate the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon it. And then a naqi, the pure side of it, there's a category here in regards to how it relates to other people. It's pure in regards to what it holds in regards to other people. So taqi, it holds an awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that doesn't allow it to fall into ithm, that doesn't allow it to fall into sinfulness, at least not in a knowing, knowing fashion. So it's so in awe and enamored with its Lord that it purifies itself from what would compromise that sight and the integrity of that sight upon it. Then the second part, naqi, refers to what? Baghyun, ithmun, hasad. Particularly where the Prophet ﷺ mentions uh, transgression and envy. It doesn't hold transgression and envy. Transgression refers to the hope that someone else will get hurt or the desire that should the opportunity present itself, I will inflict harm on this person. Okay? How can a heart be a transgressor? Because the heart intends. So if the heart intends transgression, and the only thing stopping it is that it hasn't found a moment or an opportunity to hurt someone else, it still holds a transgression inside of it. And hasad is a very specific disease of envy, that you hate someone for something that they have that you wish you had. You hate to see someone else in a position that you feel like you deserve. You hate that someone else has a life that you feel like you should be living. Hasat. It's in the heart here. 
and it's going to shape a particular type of mindset, and it's going to shape your actions, and it's going to consume your thoughts, and it's going to dictate your actions. It all goes back to that. Now here is what makes this hadith very interesting, this particular narration. Uh, this hadith has a shorter, more commonly quoted version, which is authentic. This one's a little longer. This one, the, com the companions continue, and they say, فَمَنْ عَلَىٰ إِثْرِهِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ who shows signs of that, O Messenger of Allah? You know, you're talking about a deep internal feeling. Who shows signs of that? Like, what are the traces of a person that has that type of quality then, Ya Rasulullah? You know, speaking the truth is so obvious. But what are the signs? And he responded, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alladhi yashna dunya wa yuhibbul akhirah. A person who really despises superficiality. Yashna dunya here doesn't mean you hate the world. It means you hate worldliness. Like they, they really are turned off by worldly enamor and instead you hibbul akhira. Like they love the hereafter. They actually love the akhira. The concept of the hereafter is one that pushes them to action. It's what consumes their thoughts. It's what gets their hearts excited. You hibbul akhira. Now look at the honesty of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said, Ya Rasulullah, ma na'rifu hadha fina illa rafi' mawla Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said, look, the only person that really fits that description the way you just said it is Abi Rafi' who was a freed slave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you go back and you uh, watch the uh, episode that we did on Al-Abbas Sallallahu Ta'ala Anhu and Umm Al-Fadl, his wife Sallallahu Anha, Abu Rafi' was a, a slave of Al-Abbas and he was a private believer in Mecca. He embraced Islam before Al-Abbas and the Prophet freed him and he became one of the great companions and dedicated companions of the Prophet So they're saying, you know that pure hearted person who simply just walks on this earth, who seems to not carry any ill will towards anyone, nor any love for this world, it seems like that simple man, Abi Rafi'ah. He just comes in the masjid, he goes, he's always kind of minding his own business, he doesn't speak much, he's clearly like not here. He's clearly focused on something else. So the Sahaba are saying, is that what you're talking about? And the Prophet Wasallam stayed silent. So they said, فَمَنْ عَلَىٰ أَثَرِهِ So then, who resembles that type of person? And the Prophet said, مُؤْمِنٌ فِي خُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ A believer with good character. Don't, compl don't complicate this. A Muslim who has good character, a believer who has good character, is operating from a good place. Focus on that. Don't focus on the circumstances. Don't focus on a very particular type of person. Focus on that. Now what makes this really important is that the Prophet connected your pursuit to the poisons of the heart, as well as how you interact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the world around you, all in one hadith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simplifies it by saying the following, ما جعل الله لرجل من قلبين في جوفه. Allah did not give two hearts to a single person. No human being has two hearts. You don't have two hearts. If you have two hearts, then you seemingly can have two contradicting sets of priority. Then you can have two purposes. Then you can have two loves. Then you can have two drivers. Then you can have two motivators. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allah didn't give you two hearts. So when you claim to have those seemingly contradictory purposes and drives and priorities, you're only lying to yourself. Because Allah did not give you two hearts. Nor will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow one heart to possess, you know, to build on this, one heart cannot possess two contradictory emotions. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in two ahadith, and listen to this because they're, very, they're both authentic and they're very, um, you know, insightful. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يجتمع في جو في عبد المؤمن الإيمان والحسد. In one narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no heart can carry both iman and envy, faith and envy. There's no such thing as a heart that can carry these two things and be true to the iman or, you know, actually hold hasad in what it contains, actually hold envy in what it contains. In another narration, also authentic, Rasulullah said, لا يجتمع 
said, He said, Faith and greed cannot coexist in the heart of a single servant. So faith and greed and faith and envy. And you connect that, subhanAllah, to that hadith where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the pure heart, taqi, naqi, conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saleem, pure in regards to everybody else. Conscious in what it wants from Allah and how it's being perceived by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pure, does not seek to violate or harm anyone else and does not covet what others have because it's so busy coveting the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.